Good morning and welcome to worship here at Presbyterian Church of the Covenant. It is a great joy to see so many folks here. It is a joy to have folks joining us online and it is a great joy to have Ginny back with us. So, the exciting thing happening is this, well, worship is always exciting too, but an equally exciting thing is happening here this evening, a premiere of our Advent liturgy, our composition, um, commissioned um, by the church through a wonderful grant um, Delaware, from Delaware Arts. And the music director right up the street at Trinity Presbyterian, Alexis Ward, has written original music for our Advent Vespers this evening. So make sure you are here at seven o'clock to hear wonderful, wonderful music. Um, we have some folks from both churches singing and ringing and reading. So it's going to be just beautiful. Thank you to Ron and Phyllis for putting up our lovely um, pew sconces. Is that what they're called? Few candles, thank you, Ron. All right, <laughs> they are beautiful. Thank you for doing that. I know that's a labor of love. <laughs> Our Bible study, Advent Bible study, continues each Wednesday evening at seven on Zoom. If you have not read the book, that's okay because the discussions are sort of linked to it, but sort of not. They're wonderfully reflective and we have a great time just being together even on zoom and talking and um, discussing things so even if you don't have the book don't worry about it just join in the, the questions are pretty um well free ranging at times but they're linked to certain items so it's it's really easy to join in the conversation so please join us on zoom Send Nancy an email, a text, um, call the church office to get the Zoom link, okay? We have our session meeting right at, well, not right after, but at 11.30 um, in the West Room. It will also be hybrid. And coming up, of course, is our Christmas Eve service at 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary and live streamed. And we will be <clears throat> taking our Christmas joy offering. There is um, a little insert in the bulletin for you to read about what this gift does. So, let's stand and sing our prelude. Awake, awake, and greet the new morn, and it will be verse 3. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. 
I invite you to join me responsively in the call to worship. A voice calls out in the wilderness, it sings of a home for all, it speaks of justice and peace. We could choose to ignore it. We could drown out that song. We could choose not to listen. Instead, we come into this space. We let the, let the world, world grow quiet. quiet. We, we listen. listen. A voice calls out in the wilderness. Do you hear it? We, we hear it. it. In, in listening, listening we, we worship. worship. Let us draw near to God. takes courage to tell the truth. John the Baptist knew it. His job as a prophet certainly could not have been easy. And you and I know it. Our job as people of faith, 
to create a home for all has never been easy. In our prayer of confession, may we channel some of John the Baptist's courage to tell the truth about ourselves and our world. We do not do this to shame ourselves or guilt ourselves for being imperfect. We speak the truth out loud because we know that we cannot grow and change without first being honest. So let us be brave. Let us be bold. Let us be truth tellers as we confess together now to a God who couldn't love us any more than God already does. So let us pray together the prayer of confession. Expansive God, we know that the church is your house, and your house has room for everyone. Yet too often, instead of setting the table for our neighbors, we block the door. Instead of welcoming all, we judge others by our own standards. Instead of sharing our second coat, we hide it in the attic, holding on to fear instead of letting go with love. Remind us that your home is a home for all, that truth requires hard work, that truth requires uncomfortable justice. Help us to be bold enough to see it and brave enough to live it. With hope we pray. Amen. Family of faith, God sent prophets like John the Baptist to us because this work is not easy. Helping create a world where all might have a home and all might be loved and all might know peace is an audacious goal. Fortunately for us, when we mess up, when we lose our way or forget our call, we are met with grace. God could not love us any more or any less than God already does. So rest in the good news. We are at home with God, forgiven, claimed, and loved. The door is always open for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. now in that spirit, the peace of the risen Christ is with you and also with you. And now you are invited, whether you are in person or at home, to turn to the people around you and wave to each other as a sign of graceful greetings this day. And for those of you at home, please take a moment to share God's peace in the comment section. So we light a Christ candle to remind us that Christ is the light and love in the world. And we light our own individual candles to remind us that we are to be light and love in the world too. That means I got the added one. 
Do you have the, uh, yes you do, you have the Addy candle. Okay, we have a special Addy candle. It never lights. It never lights quite right, does it? <laughs> it's the Addy candle, it gives us trouble. <laughs> does Addy give us trouble? No, she's so sweet. But the candle does, yeah. Is it, is it working? Give it a tap. There we go. Okay, there we are. We get that candle sorted out. Oh, all of them are having trouble today? Oh dear. It's troubles everywhere. But not the Christ candle. Yes. Yes. There's something in that, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so our story from the Bible today is about John the Baptist. I know, I have these uh, Clementines here. And he went around telling people to share their coats and to share their food. He wanted people to share. That was God's message through him to the people. Share. That doesn't sound so hard, does it? No. You know, sometimes I wonder if those people listened to what he said and actually went and did it afterwards. What do you think? Do you think they listened and did what he said? No. No? No? I don't know. It's hard to share. I have these lovely clementines here. They are so delicious. Do you like these? I haven't tried them. You haven't tried them? Wow. I do like oranges. They're sort of like oranges, but a little sweeter. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's mine. Oh. Hmm. Ah, oh, I guess I should listen too, huh? Should I listen? Okay, here you go. Thank you, but it's COVID. It's COVID. It's COVID, yes. Yeah, we can't, we can't really food. eat these, huh? We could yeah. wash them. You could wash them. Yeah, I can wash them. Yeah, yeah you could wash Here, there's, I have two, and now you have two. Now both of us have even amounts. Now both of us have even amounts, yes. We shared exactly it right. Is exactly what God wants us to do. That is, did you hear what Gideon said? This is exactly what God wants us to do. Right there. End the sermon. Yeah, but we shouldn't <laughs> share everything. We shouldn't share germs, right? We shouldn't share funerals. No, we shouldn't. We shouldn't we do that. We shouldn't share limbs. No, we shouldn't share limbs. No. Or houses. We could share houses. What if somebody needs a place to stay? We could Actually, share a house. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking more of a, like houses, like giving them to someone else temporarily. Oh, I mean, like, yeah. That kind of sharing. That kind of sharing. Yeah. That's a yeah. different kind of sharing. That is a different kind of sharing, isn't it? Yeah. But God wants us to share. Mm -hmm. And we both have plenty, don't we? Yeah, you can have this one. No, it's OK. You keep it. I, I still have two. Well, thank you so much. You know what? In case Addie and, and Grayson join us later, I'll keep them right in here. Yeah, and also, this is a really fresh one. It is. It's very fresh. I made sure it was, yes. Yeah, I wouldn't want to share very, something that wasn't good. This is huh. very hot to the bone. I know. It's the very the fresh. Bone, the, the, um, the more what would happen if I had shared something that wasn't quite so fresh with you? If I had given you the one that was kind of icky, that wouldn't be very nice, would it? No. No. Uh-uh, no. I don't think God would like that too much, huh? No. We want to give the good stuff, right? We share the good you share, stuff. You share, you share stuff and, they, and you shouldn't put it in a juice of sharing something if it's actually not good anymore. Right, we should not share something if it's not good anymore. Exactly right. That wouldn't be fun to receive it, would it? No, no. no. Well, God wants us to share. You said that so well. Thank you so much, Gideon. Shall we have our prayer together? Yes. Okay. Gracious God. Thank you for giving us things to share. Remind us that we always have enough. Because we have you. And we pray this, we pray this. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, go enjoy your clementine, and we'll see if uh, Addie and Grayson come for theirs, too. Thank you. You're welcome.
And now I invite you to listen to our prayer of illumination. God, whose love is like the sun warming me from the inside, if you are my home, then your word is the streetlight guiding me there. So I want you to know, I am walking your way, we are walking your way, and we are looking for a light, and our feet are dirty, We've lost our way a time or two, and our bags are heavy. We're carrying an array of grief and fear on our backs. But we're on our way. We're looking for your light. We're listening for your word. When you see us coming, when you feel our hearts move, we hope you'll run down the driveway and catch us. Leave the light on. We are on our way home. Gratefully we pray, amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Rejoice, daughter Zion. Shout, Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed your judgment. He has turned away your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is in your midst. You will no longer fear evil. On that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, don't fear, Zion, don't let your hands fall. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior bringing victory. He will create calm with his love, he will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove you from, from you those worried about the appointed feasts. They have been a burden for her, a reproach. Watch what I am about to do to all your oppressors at that time. I will deliver the lame. I will gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and fame throughout the earth. At that time, I will bring all of you back. At the time when I gather you, I will give you fame and praise among all the neighboring peoples when I restore your possessions and you can see them, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. I invite you to listen again to the word of God as found in Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. In the 15th year of the rule of the emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor over Judea and Herod was ruler over Galilee, his brother Philip was ruler over Ituria and Trachonitis, and Licinius was ruler over Abilene. During the priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, God's word came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. John went throughout the region of the Jordan River, calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. This is just as it was written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight, Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The crooked will be made straight and the rough places made smooth. All humanity will see God's salvation. Then John said to the crowds who came to be baptized by him, You children of snakes, you, who warned you to escape from the angry judgment that is coming soon? Produce fruit that shows you have changed your hearts and lives. And don't even think about saying to yourselves, Abraham is our father. I tell you that God is able to raise up Abraham's children from these stones. The ax is already at the root of the trees. 
Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and tossed into the fire. The crowds asked him, what then shall we do? He answered, whoever has two shirts must share with the one who has none. And whoever has food must do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. They said to him, teacher, what should we do? He replied, collect no more than you are authorized to collect. Soldiers asked, what about us? What should we do? He answered, don't cheat or harass anyone and be satisfied with your pay. The people were filled with expectation and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. John replied to them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husks is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring the wheat into his barn. But he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. With many other words, John appealed to them, proclaiming good news to the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our theme has been close to home. Our foundation, our building is from God, and we are close to God. We are close to home. We live in God's home, God's world. Each and every one of us is beloved of God and welcomed into that place. I was thinking about homes and preparing as I went about kind of to, you know, clean up my own home a bit, um, to put out some Christmas decorations and clearing away the cobwebs. But home is also within us, isn't it? And sometimes we need to clean up what's in here in order to prepare this Advent for this coming of God with us, Emmanuel. It's a joyful time when we prepare our homes for a new arrival. We get a room ready, right? If we're having a baby, if we're having guests, any kind of arrival, we prepare. We want things sparkling and clean as best we can do. We want to make our homes warm and welcoming, nurturing if we're inviting children in. And that's what Advent is, preparing. Preparing ourselves, preparing our homes, and preparing our world for the Advent of Emmanuel, God with us, again. That's the essence of it, isn't it? Making things, including ourselves, right with God once again. Now, I don't really think that any of us here need a huge clean out. You're pretty good people. But, you know, maybe there's some dusty corners that might need a little attention. Maybe there's a squeaky hinge, you know, that needs a little bit of oiling and tending to. Are we truly right with God in order to welcome in the Christ? Sometimes that can be easier said than done. Sometimes we need a little more work than we'd like to admit, maybe. I'm sure the people who heard John's message were not entirely happy, especially about the children of snakes remark. You know, who wants to hear that? I don't think anyone. Sometimes we react to words like that. We don't want to hear it. I'm sorry, that doesn't apply to me. But if we take a deep breath, and just hear what John has to say, maybe it is for us. Maybe there are some corners we do need to clean out. But then, if we lift our eyes off ourselves and we look around, our community, our world, 
because everything does belong to God. God created this wonderful world that we live in. There are things that are not right. There are things that need cleaning up. And that is our call, not only during Advent, but throughout all of our lives as disciples of Jesus Christ and people of God. John's message is harsh. Children of snakes, that's, that's kind of harsh. You know? Who warned you to get right with God? Those are not happy words, but they are words of good news. Because when people ask John, well, okay, true, I didn't do what I should, my heart has turned kind of far away from God right now, John lets them know what they can do. It's pretty concrete. If you have two coats, two shirts, share with someone who has none. If you have what you need, share with folks who don't. Don't cheat, don't extort, don't abuse your position of power. It's pretty easy, and yet it can be rather hard as well. Sometimes we just don't want to hear those things, and sometimes we grow fearful. We want to hide that second coat up in the attic, right? Just in case. Just in case. But that's not the good news that we need to hear, is it? Share. Share. If you have two coats, two shirts, four clementines, share with those who have none. Fear can be such an obstacle. We're fearful of running out. We're fearful of other people. We can be so filled with fear that we don't act. And that's one of the wonderful things that God does for us and with us and through us, helps to alleviate that fear. We can be a little fearful, we can be a little scared, but God will help us overcome that fear. John Calvin, our, our father of Presbyterianism, said, and it is what we also know by experience that when fear prevails in our hearts, they are, as it were, lifeless, so that we cannot raise even a finger to do anything. But when hope animates us, there is a vigor in the whole body so that alacrity appears everywhere. God with us releases us from fear and shame, invigorating us to do as God desires. Isn't that great good news? It is for me. It is for me. People of God, we do not have to worry about running out because God is always with us. Sometimes we look at our church budget and we grow fearful. We want to be prudent. We don't want to give our treasurer any more gray hair. Not that he has any. Very distinguished. But we cannot let fear impede us from being the people that God calls us to be. We are to share. And when we look around at our home here in this church, we are doing that. We have cleaned out the cobwebs. We've shored up the foundation. We've taken care of the water problem to make our home a welcoming place for everyone, but especially children. We did not let fear stop us. That is really good news. 
God's good news is always for everyone. But remember, God has always shown preference for the poor, for the vulnerable, for children, for the outcasts, for the sick, for the oppressed. That is the message that we hear through prophets. That's the message that we hear in the Magnificat that Mary sings. That's the message that we hear from Jesus. That's the message we hear today from John. We need to take a good look at ourselves, our homes within, our homes without, and our world home. Not as fearful people, but as hopeful people. That because God is with us every minute of every day, we can do one small thing to clean things up, to prepare our home, to make it more in line with God's desire for all people. All people, not just some, not just those we deem worthy, all people. Seems like a monumental task. But John's words are pretty assuring, actually. If you have two coats, share with someone who has none. If you see an injustice, speak up. Don't cheat. Don't extort money. Don't abuse other people. Don't abuse your position of power. It's pretty straightforward. So I would say that our home here is very lovely and welcoming, inviting, nurturing, nurturing for all people. But folks, there's work to do in our community and the world. And that is our call today from John the Baptist. People of God, do not let fear stop you. Prepare. Prepare our hearts, our homes, our church, our world for the advent of God with us, Emmanuel, here with us and coming again. Amen. And let's stand and sing hymn number 769, For Everyone Born.
um, The people asked John, what should we do? I've asked myself that a million times in my life. How do I make a difference? Can I really do anything that could help this hurting world? Is it already too late? Is it already too big? I can feel overwhelming at times. It can feel overwhelming at times. But John says, if you have two coats, give one away. It's all that easy, and it's all that hard. So friends, let us give our tithes and our offerings now, knowing that these gifts help build a world where all have a home, where all are welcomed, fed, loved, and known. What should we do? What should we, sh we should give what we have. It's all that easy and all that hard. And let us join together in the dedication of today's offering. God who welcomes us home, who creates space, who leaves a chair with our name on it. We have two coats and we are giving one away. That's what this offering is. It's our second coat. It's our hearts on our sleeves. It's our audacious hope that there can indeed be a better world than this one. So take these gifts and use them to move us closer to that promised day. Gratefully we pray. Amen. We have some sad news to share. Our beloved preschool director, Ellen, her father died this morning. So please hold Ellen and her family in your prayers. Are there any other prayers, joys, or concerns that we want to take to God today in our corporate prayer? It is a joy to have Ginny back with us so recuperated from her surgery. Yay. Vicki, yes. Yes, yes. The people <clears throat> um, in the Midwest, Kentucky, Illinois, Arkansas, Tennessee, who were hit by those devastating tornadoes, the death count and injury count just keeps rising. There is a way to make a donation to help them through PCUSA, um, our mission organization that helps with disaster assistance. So you can go online to um, our denominations website, pcusa.org, um, and you'll be able to donate directly to our denomination on the ground there, helping uh, people put their lives back together. Other joys and concerns that we want to lift up this day? Let's take all these things and what is in our hearts to God in prayer. God of open doors and porch lights, of welcome mats and candles in the window, we cannot thank you enough that you open doors for us and all people. You are forever welcoming us home In a world that puts handrails on park benches so that those without a roof over their heads cannot lay down, you offer something so very different. You welcome all of us just as we are. You show us a picture of a world that could be within our grasp. You remind us that there is enough love to go around and that neighbor helping neighbor is who we are called to be. We thank you for the voice in the wilderness that calls to us. We thank you for the radical welcome and your unchanging love. 
Today, God, we give extra thanks for the people and places that are home to us. But we also pray for all those without a home. Gracious God, we pray for those people in Kentucky and Arkansas and Illinois and Tennessee and Mississippi and Arkansas who are grieving, who have no roof over their heads right now, whose lives are shattered. We pray for immigrants and refugees who have no home, who are navigating their way to a better, better world, but have to go through trauma and change and loss. We pray for those who are escaping from violent situations, longing for a better world and a better chance for their children. We pray for those who experience homelessness here in this country and for those scraping together every last coin to pay their rent. We pray for those who do not feel at home in their bodies. We pray that they find an identity that fits their spirit. We pray for those who do not feel at home in your church, wounded by strict rules or judgmental accusations. We pray for those who long to build a home with one another, but instead find themselves eating meals alone. God, there are so many who need a home a true home of love and welcome, of nurture. Help us to be builders of those homes, starting within us and here in this place. Give us the courage of John, who saw a way forward so clearly. Turn our words into actions and our convictions into change. Gracious God, you know our needs before we even speak a word. You know the needs of those who are hurting this day. We lift up all those who mourn. We pray especially for Ellen and her family. But we know there are also those who mourn recent loss and loss that's been for many years. We pray that there is some peace that you give them, some comfort in the midst of tears. We pray for those who are ill this day. We pray for their healing we pray for those who are undergoing treatments. Give them courage. Give them strength. And give them your peace. Let them know that you are with them every moment. Gracious God, we also give you joy we thank you on this day when we celebrate the joy of you with us always and Emmanuel coming to be with us. We give you joy for healing, for recovery from surgeries. We give you joy for new birth, for celebrations. We give you joy that we are your people and you fill us with hope because you are with us and we need not fear. Gracious God, you are the God who welcomes all, who opens doors 
and celebrates our return to you. Teach us to be the same. And as your children, your beloved children here in this place, we say the words that Jesus taught us in our prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let's stand and sing our final hymn, A Home for All, different words but familiar tune. Before we say our vision statement, I would just like to say thank you to everyone who sent texts, emails, and mailed cards or virtual cards with encouragement and well wishes. It really does work. And now let us join together in our vision statement. We are a congregation loving God, connecting people, changing lives, and reflecting Christ to the world. And now, God's people, as you leave this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open wide your arms with compassion. Be brave enough to go another way home. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcomed. 
So in the name of our foundation, God's spirit and son, go in peace. And verse three, for people look east. Thank you.